everybody and welcome to night number eight of history bedtime stories in our pajamas live from bed we're talking about food tonight now detroit has an amazing food history we're the coney island capital of the world hot dog with mustards onion and chilies we are the potato chip capital of the world eating more potato chips per person in the state of michigan than anywhere else on the planet but throughout history we've eaten some really weird stuff in detroit including frog legs we actually consume more frog legs in detroit in the 1800s than we do chicken oysters are huge here at the turn of the 1800s to the 1900s with many fine establishments building ice boxes only to hold the crustaceans. In fact, one of my favorite places, the Detroit Club, which is located downtown, still open today, but a 140-year-old private uh, gentleman's lunch club, they built in a separate ice box just for oysters that was 12 feet long, eight feet high, and 15 inches wide. That's how many oysters they were going through in a week there. But of all the strange foods we eat in Detroit, I don't know if any outrank the muskrat. A muskrat, it's a rat. There, there's no other way to say this, it's a rat. It is uh, between two and five pounds. They've got these long skinny tails. They're about 20 inches long from their nose to their tail. And they are a den creature, just like a beaver. They build dams in rivers, estuaries, ponds, lakes. They do really well in marshy grasslands, which Southeast Michigan is marshy grasslands. They live on the Detroit River in huge numbers on the Rouge River. Uh, they do very, very well, and they have for millennia. The Algonquin, Wyandot, and Maumee Native Americans all had muskrat as part of their uh, diets. They not only ate them, but they used their pelts. In early colonial trading days, a beaver pelt was sort of the gold standard, but 10 muskrat pelts could be traded for one beaver pelt, and that made them incredibly valuable. Today, muskrat uh, always makes of a bit of appearance this time of year because Catholics in Detroit have dispensation to eat muskrats during Lent. For non-practicing Catholics, during Lent, uh, Catholics abstain from eating meat on Ash Wednesday and Fridays. That is a little different than it was 200 years ago. 200 years ago, Catholics abstained from eating meat for the entire duration of Lent. And then there was this whole thing called Vatican II that changed that, but today we still eat muskrat. Now the origin of this dispensation is a little bit foggy. Some people think it comes during the War of 1812 when soldiers were starving and the Vatican agreed to allow them to hunt and eat the muskrat, which were prevalent even in the winter months as a way of warding off starvation. Others give credit to the good pastor, Father Gabriel Richard, who was the priest of St. Anne's Due Detroit Catholic Church. And Father Gabriel Richard was an amazing guy. He believed in ministering to the people. He led groups of multiple different faiths. And in the 1780s and 90s, he started trekking downriver out of Detroit to offer ministry to the communities that today we would say like are Monroe, River Rouge, Wyandotte. And he starts realizing that they're starving to death. In the winter when they don't have crops, it's very, very hard to fish, and the hunting is really, really uh, sparse. One of the few animals they can catch and eat are the muskrat. So it is said he approaches the Vatican and the archdiocese with an argument that it swims, it lives in the water. Could we call it a fish? And one way or another, that dispensation is given. By 1913, there's a priest called Father Tobias Morin, and he's the priest out in Newport, Michigan at St. Charles Church. He decides he's going to host a muskrat dinner as a fundraiser to build a school at his church, and 400 people show up. Detroiters travel all the way to Newport, which today doesn't sound like a bad trip because we can hop in cars, but then would take a full day of travel by horse. They show up they eat um, over 800 of the little animals, and then Stone's Orchestra plays ragtime music and they dance into the night, earning enough money in just five years of Linton muskrat dinners to open the school on the property. Today, Detroiters still eat odd things. We love Fago rock and rye pop. We love Coney dogs. We even like corned beef egg rolls. And as we go through this quarantine, I think all of us are gonna be having some very interesting and strange meals with what's left in our cupboard. But I wanna turn you over to a friend of mine, Chef Allie Little, in a different bed, in different pajamas, because she's got an important message for you tonight. 
Hi everyone, this is Chef Allie with the Standard Bistro and Larder and Order Up Tour with Detroit History Tours. And I'm coming to you live tonight from my bedroom in my pajamas to ask for a little help. This week, millions of Americans lost their livelihood in the hospitality industry. And I'm asking you to please call your state senator and representatives. This is the number to the Capitol switchboard. So if you don't know who your senator or representative is, they will connect you. So don't worry, just call this number. And I'm asking you to demand that they don't just bail out big businesses, but they also help small businesses too. It is the only way that we can save the people and the places that we love. And I think that if we work together, we really can do this. Bonus, if you, if you call, comment down below that you've called, share this video, and one week from today on Friday, Detroit History Tours will be doing a gift card giveaway. $50 gift card to my restaurant, The Standard Bistro and Larder. I would love to have you come dine with us, give you a big hug when all of this is over and it's safe to hug again, and celebrate the fact that all of this is behind us. Please call, comment you've called, and share this video. Much love, stay safe, and wash your hands.